Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time. Um, this is the uh, pretty fearsome looking Master Lock Magnum number one choice of professionals, trademark, um, M176X DLH, tough under fire, lifetime guarantee, best cut, best cut resistance, 7 out of 10 security, anti gym. Um, which is why actually I think this is possibly one of the worst locks in the world not because there aren't worse locks in some regards you know there are clear clearly some like you know luggage locks and plastic locks and all sorts of terrible locks out there but um but this one pretends to be really good when actually it's one of the most flawed lock designs I've ever ever seen in fact including the two legitimate ways of opening it which is to get use the actual code and this bypass key there are um, four other ways you can get into this lock so there are six ways you can open this lock the first of which um, is going to be a bypass technique using this um, Peterson's mini knife now this is <laughs> this is almost inexcusable master lock have known about the master lock 175 bypass technique um, for ages and so have other lock manufacturers Yet this same um, uh, lock make, despite this being an updated version of the Master Lock 175, still is bypassable. So we're just going to go in um, between the side of the lock on wheel three and just uh, pop that in all the way to the back. It's an odd lock mechanism, you have to push it in and then um, lift it up and then just wiggle it out but there you go one bypass lock um, and I'll lock it up and show you that it's not actually the right code so there you go and that's locked again with all the dars up I mean that's pretty terrible right a lock um, which is not cheap by the way this isn't a cheap lock and it's got all this kind of like packaging and and you know all this uh, bump about how good it is on it but yet you can bypass it straight away Okay, so if that isn't bad enough, you can decode the thing um, using sort of standard decode techniques. So with this, we're going to put the flat of um, this down the back here, rest the taper on the wheel or the spindle, and we're just going to keep turning until, oh, it rocks back. And we're on seven. There you go. That was easy. Um, let's spin this one a bit more keep going and there we go it's just rock back on eight seven eight this won't be the code by the way this is just me feeling the flat spot um, and once we got the flat spot on each of these we'll just turn it to the right spot there we go what's that zero um, and again on this one keep turning it until it rocks back on itself And there we go, which is five. So this isn't actually the code, but what we do have here is seven eight zero five. Let's move it forwards a notch. Move it forwards a notch. Just one at a time. No, move forwards a notch. forwards a notch and move forwards a notch I think this is it there we go so remember that 2350 is it the right code well it says to cut here for reset tool and combination um, so let's cut here like it says and try and find the knife there we go, cut here. So there we go, this is two, three, five, zero. I mean, that is, again, unforgivable. We do have a, uh, a tool to reset the code. I'll keep it there for now. But there you go, two ways to get into this lock. Um, let's try and get in legitimately then. So 
once I lock that back up, there we go, I can, um, oh, there you go, it's all locked back up, and then, so I have to do this one because, um, there you go, 2350, just to show you it works normally, there you go, open. Okay, so that's uh, three ways of opening it, one legitimately, admittedly. Then it's got this at the side, look at this. This is, oh no, I forgot my code, how to get in. I know, I'll use a key. So we've actually got another mechanism by which you can open the lock. So if I just cut this off here, there we go, now I've got a key. This key should open this lock too. Put it in, turn it, shackle in a little bit, turn it and open. So there you go, that's four. So what other two ways we're going to use? Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick it and then rake it. So is it pickable? Is it rakeable? Um, I think the answer should be pretty obvious by now. Uh, yes, it is pickable and yes, it is rakeable. So let's try the technically easier um, technique first, which is to rake it. And you will have to, we will have to just depress the shackle in a bit because it needs that. Uh, this is a, a, a weird little uh, Picology um, rake, I don't know what the model is, but it's brilliant for these smaller locks, um, I find. So let's go in, and we're open, there we go, raked. Now try a bit of SPP, the sixth and final way to get in, oh, just need to turn this back apparently, there we go. The sixth and final way to get in here, a bit of SPP same kind of thing um, we'll just need to depress the shackle in a bit so I can get in there try my best not to overset the pins which is easy to do on a, on a lock like this three two one reset Ah, there we go, and now we've got an open. Okay, wow. Um, <laughs> I might speed that bit up for you, but there we go. We did get an open. I think that the, in its defence, it is hard to uh, pick a um, a lock which is quite that small because you always overset those pins, which is what I was doing over and over again. But there you go. That was the Master Lock M One Seven Six XDLH, which has been picked open, bypassed, unlocked, decoded, you name it. So six ways of opening this lock. So do you think that this is actually um, one of the worst locks in the world? Put a comment below and tell me. See you next time.